everyone welcome to another video of Feynman education today we will be discussing mathematics paper 1 um, 19th May 2020 so the first question is from arithmetic sequence the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence are 1 4 7 10 and 13 write down an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence so in order to approach these kind of problems we know we represent nth term equals a n plus b and then a is the first term or sorry a is a common difference a is a common difference so let's see what is the common difference between the terms here when you check you can see the common difference between the terms are 3 now in order to find b we put 1 in each of these terms so when you put n as 1 you will get 1 equals 3 plus b which means b equals 1 minus 3 which is minus 2 so you can say nth term equals 3n minus 2 so that is the answer now let's move on to the next question which is show that this fraction times this part will give you this fraction so this part will be 3 times 2 plus 1 over 3 and this part will be 4 times 3 plus 3 over 4 and this is gonna be 4 times 8 plus 3 over 4 so each of these parts will be as follows 7 over 3 times 15 over 4 will give you 4 times 8 which is 4 times 8 plus 3 which is 35 over 4 so that's what you have to prove 35 over 4 when you do this you can see it is indeed 35 over 4 so that is how you do it first you make the conversion to improper fraction and then method of multiplying fraction and then for complete working of that 35 over 4 is indeed 8 9 over 12 now the diagram next problem is the diagram shows four graphs graph a graph b graph c and graph d for each of the equation in the for in the table is the equation of one graphs complete the table so you have to complete the table for these questions so first one you can easily identify y equals x square will be a graph of this form y equals x square will be a graph of this form that's one of the easiest so fr from there you can say graph d graph d will be this so you can say this is graph d right now another one you can do is x cube that you can see there is minus x cube and x cube so minus x cube means these two graphs these x cube and minus x cubes will be mirror images will be mirror images because of the negative because of the negative sign so here you can see there's only two graphs which are kind of mirror images which is graph b and graph c now your task is to find which is plus uh, which is minus x cube and which is plus x cube so this is graph c will be y is equal to x cube 
and graph b will be y is equal to minus x cube you can check that for example if you put one value as one you can get the a y value as also one if when x is equal to one y is equal to one but here when your x is one your x is, is equal to one your y is minus one see so you can differentiate the graph by just checking like you know the values okay now the only one that's remaining now is the last one which is y is equal to 1 over x so that's going to be graph a so you can fill that graph a and this is going to be graph b this is graph c that those are the answers for that question now let's move to the next one the diagram shows four triangle triangle a triangle b triangle c and triangle d Two of these triangles are concurrent. Write down the letters of these two triangles. So you have to find the concurrent triangles from the figures that are given. So our criteria are the angles should be same and then the sides should be also same. So there are some angles given, but there are some missing angles as well, right? So what you can do is one of this angle is 45 right and this is 55 so what will be the next angle you can find what you have to do is let's say let's call this angle as x so x will be 180 minus 55 plus 45 right so that's gonna be 180 minus 100 so you will get 80 so x is 80 this angle is 80 degrees similarly you is there any way you can find these angles not possible not possible not possible not possible since you can use trigonometry but you don't have to do that much amount of work in these kind of problems now the last problem the last part triangle d you can easily find a missing angle that will be 55 so you can see this angle these three angles are same for these three triangles and you can say one of the sides are also the same which is our criteria for concurrent triangles so you can say a and d those are the answers now let's move on to the next problem here Seen pays uh, 10 pounds for 24 chocolate and he sells all 24 chocolate bars for 50 pence each. So work out Seen's percentage profit. That's what you have to find. So our first understanding is we know 100 pence is 1 pound, right? So you can say the cost of 24 chocolate bar is 20 10 pounds we know that and then the selling price of one chocolate bar was 50 pence so the selling price of 24 chocolate bar you can find selling price selling price of 24 chocolate bars will be 24 times 50 pence that is gonna be 1200 pence so the selling price of 24 chocolate bars in this case will be 12 pounds so the profit will be 12 pounds minus 10 pounds so that's gonna be 2 pounds now to make it into percentage what you can say you do is profit percentage can be calculated by 2 over 10 which is profit this is our profit value and this is this is going to be the cost price and you just multiply it with 100 and you will see the answer will be 20 percentage so that is the correct answer for this problem 
Now let's move on to the next problem, which is ADC is a triangle. So you can see there's a triangle. AED and ABC are straight lines. So AED and ABC are straight lines. EB is parallel to DC. This is parallel. ED to, is parallel to DC. And angle EBC is 148 degree. So that's given. And ADC is 60 degree. That's also given. Work out the size of the angle EAB. EAB, which is this angle. This is uh, relatively easy. You have to just apply the all the theorems you learned about angles, which are like corresponding angles are equal, allied angles or co interior angles add up to 180, angles on a straight line add up to 180, and angles in a triangle also add up to 180. And you also know the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of interior of the opposite angles. So what you can do first is you have to find EA, EAB is EAB given? No, but you can find EAB because the exterior angle that is going to be 180 minus 180 minus 148. So you will get. Thirty two here, right? So that's going to be angle EBA, and you can say angle BCD. BCD, these two angles are thirty two each. So this is thirty two, this is thirty two, as these are parallel lines. Now you can say angle DEB. DEB will be 180 minus 63 because we know this is also 63 so this is going to be 180 minus 63 so this is going to be 117 right so from there you can calculate angle EAB so angle EAB you can find is you can just 180 minus 63 plus 32 okay so that is the value so you will get eab as 85 so that is the correct answer for this problem next problem the table shows information about the heights in centimeters of group of year nine girls least height is 150 centimeters Median is 165 and greatest height is 170. This stem and leaf diagram shows information about the heights in centimeters of a group of 15 year 9 boys. Okay. So compare the distribution of the heights of the girls with the distribution of the heights of the boys. That's a problem. So here in these kind of problems you have to do is identification of, of the range of the girls which you have to find range of girls where when you do the calculations you will get the range as 20 next is you have to find the range and the median we can either com compare you can do the comparison using the range or you can find the median so range of boys range of boys will be 24 when you do the calculation similarly median will be median of boys will be 168 so you can say is a median height of girl is 165 which is less than the median height of boys which is 168 and the range of the girls is 20 is less than the range of the boys which is 24 so you can do any of these comparison um, as you wish okay next problem the diagram shows a prism placed on a horizontal floor and there's an equation given pressure is force over area 
The prism has a height of 3 meters and the volume of the prism is 18 meter cube. The pressure on the floor due to the prism is 75 newton per meter square. Work out the force exerted by the prism on the floor. So you have to find the force exerted by the prism, prism on the floor. You have height and volume. From there you can find area, right? So your equation is volume is equal to equals area times height so from there you can find height equals oh sorry you have height given so you, you need to find area so area equals volume over height which me which you can do is volume is 18 meter cube and height is 3 meters from there you get value 6 right and you have pressure as force over area which means you can now apply f as p times a which is 75 newton per meter square times 6 so that's gonna be your answer let's move on to the next problem write these numbers in order of size starts with smallest number so here you have to find the smallest number smallest number you can see will be this one right so this is your smallest number so let's call this as one this is your order and then the second number will be this so you just call that two your third number will be this which is let's call this as three and this is going to be your fourth number so those are the answers for this problem pretty easy problem so you, here you have you can do the conversion of 10 to the power into the normal form and just compare this now less problem is given that a over b equals 2 over 5 and b over c is 3 over 4 you have to find the ratio of A, B, and C. So, you can do, what you can do is choose a multiplier to equate these two fractions in terms of B. So, you can find a multiplier and then you can equate these two fractions in terms of B. N another one you can do is List equivalent fraction to 2 over 5 up to at least 6 over 5. And then you can find the ratio in that as well. So there's like different methods you can use. So one of the methods you can do is multiplying 2 over 5 times 3 over 3 you will get 6 over 15 similarly 3 over 4 times 5 over 5 you get 15 over 20 so you can say in the first part a to a a is to b will be 6 is to 15 similarly b is to c will be 15 is to 20 so you can say a is to b is to c will be 6 is to 15 is to 20 that's the easiest method you can see you can do okay so you make it uh, everything in terms of a so here so in terms of b write everything write a and c in terms of b so, okay by choosing a multiplier so here a will be using this you can say uh, you did 2 over 5 times 3 over 3 so the 15 is at the common thing we are making to write in terms of b now let's move on to the next problem which is find the value of fourth root of 81 times 10 to the power 8 
Now here, you can split this into two half, which is you can split this into fourth root of 81 and then you can times it over fourth root of 10 to the power 8. So you know fourth root of 81 is 3 and fourth root of 10 to the power 2, 8 will be 10 square which is 100. Okay and then the answer will be 3 times 10 to the power 2 or 3 times 100 or 300 okay simple now next find the value of 64 to the power of minus 1 over 2 so here we know 64 is the square root of 8 and you, you also know you can write this index as 64 1 over 64 square root square root of 1 over 64 this can be also written as 1 over 64 to the power 1 over 2 or 64 to the power minus 1 over 2 which is represented in the question so this has a value of plus or minus 1 over 2 okay now next problem right 3 to the power n over 9 to the power n minus 1 as a power of 3 here what you can do is for you can just split 9 and minus 1 in terms of 3 which is you can do is 3 square 9 into the power n minus 1 will be 3 to the power 2 times n minus 1 or you can say this is 3 to the power 2 n minus 2 and then you can do the simplification which is you take that to the top which is there is a 3n already so 3n times 3 to the power minus 2n plus 2 so you have an n here and a n here so what you will get your final answer will be 3 to the power 2 minus n it's a relatively easy problem now the table gives information about the weekly wages of 80 people complete the cumulative frequency table so you know how to do the cumulative frequency table you just add the frequencies so here you start with 5 and then next will be 5 plus 10 which is 15 and then you add 15 plus 20 which is 35 and this goes on so that will be your answer you just add the frequencies behind these intervals now on the grid opposite draw a cumulative frequency graph of your completed table yon says 60 percentage of this group of people have a weekly wage of 360 pound or less is yon correct so how do you do this that's a c part of the question so you do a 60 you can do a 60 over 100 times 80 you just take change that percentage into numbers so that is going to be 48 from this assumption now when you draw the graph you have the graph here which is wage and cumulative frequency so that is going to be cumulative frequency 5 you can see the wage as 200 to 250 so you start with this interval and then that goes to 15 now between this interval and then it goes to 35 and then it goes to 50, uh, 55 and then it goes to 70 and then it goes to 80 so this is going to be your graph okay so you mark all those points where you inter intersection of those now 
for this part you will just say that the 55th percentile of the, in this graph is 400 so the 60th percentile must be greater than 400 so you're saying yon's argument is wrong so you say no and just give the explanations now let's move on to the next problem a liquid a and b are mixed to make liquid c liquid a has a density of 70 kilogram per meter cube and liquid a has a mass of 1400 kilogram so you have you can find volume from here for the liquid a volume right you know density is equal to mass over volume so volume will be mass over density you have to find the density of c so first you find volume of uh, a which is 1400 over 70 which you get 20 meter cube similarly you have density and volume given for b so you can find mass of mass of b which is 30 over 280 which is 8400 kilogram now you have to find density of liquid c so mass of c will be mass of a plus b why because c is made from liquid a and b so mass of a mass of c will be equal to mass of a plus mass of b so that's going to be 1400 plus 8400 so you get 9800 similarly volume of c will be mass uh, volume of a plus volume of b which is 20 plus 30 which is 50 so you can say density of c will be 9800 over 50 so that's going to be 196 kilogram per meter cube so relatively easy problem again now next problem says sally pays two games against martin in each game sally could win draw or lose in each game they play the probability that sally win against the martin is 0 0.3 and probability that sally will draw against martin is 0 0.1 work out the probability that sally will exactly win one of the two games against Matton. So what you have to do in these kind of problems. This is also a relatively easy problem. So here you have 0 0.3 you, you have to do is two times you multiply that in exactly one of those two game two games so you do two times 0 0.3 and then you do is one minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.7 so that's gonna be 0 0.42 so the answer will be 0 0.42 the next problem is a straight line l1 has an equation of y is equal to 3x minus 4 and l2 is perpendicular to l1 and passes through 9 and 5 find an equation of line l2 so you know line l2 is perpendicular to l1 so you have to first see the gradient okay gradient you know m1 times m2 will be minus 1 so gradient of m1 will be which is of l1 which is is gonna be 3 over 4 and then you have to find is m2 which is gonna be So here you can say L2 has a gradient. You can say L2 has a gradient minus 1 over 3 using the properties you have learned. 
so you can say y will be equal to minus 1 over 3 x plus c so minus 1 over 3 you know this equation m1 times m2 will be minus 1 so m1 is 3 so 3 times m2 will be minus 1 so m2 will be minus 1 over 3 similarly now you put value 9 5 in this so 9 5 will be equal to minus 1 over 3 times 9 plus c so 5 equals minus 3 plus c or c is equal to 8 so you can write y as minus 1 over 3x plus 8 so that should be your final answer now let's move on to the next problem which is Shirley wants to find an estimate for the number of bees in her hive. On Monday, she catches 90 of the bees. She puts a mark on each bees and returns them to her hive. On Tuesday, she catches 120 of the bees. She finds that 20 of the bees have been marked. Work out an estimate for the total number of her hives. So what you can do, you see 20 over 120, when you do 20 over 120, you get 1 over 6, which is on Tuesday, she catches 120 bees. She finds that 20 of the bees has been marked. So, so 90 bees is 1 6 of the total. So you can do is 90 times 6. So first you do is 20 over 120. You will get 1 over 6. And then 90 bees is 1 6. Of the total so you do is 90 times 6 so 140 540 base it's a relatively easy problem now Shirley assumes that none of the mark had rubbed off between Monday and Tuesday if Shirley's assumption is wrong explain what effect this would have been on your answer so you can say if marks have been rubbed off, the actual number of bees will be lower than for 540. If marks were rubbed, were rubbed off, you can say the actual the actual number of bees will be number of bees will be lower than lower than 540 so that is your answer now make f the subject of the formula d equals 1 times 1 sorry 3 times 1 minus f over f minus 4 so what you can do is you put values so you can just rearrange the equation so you see d times f minus 4 equals 3 times 1 minus f. Now you rearrange. So you get df minus 4d equals 3 minus 3f. So or df plus 3f equals 3 plus 4d. Or f times d plus 3 equals 4d plus 3. Or f equals 4d plus 3 over d plus 3 uh, so that is a relatively another easy problem now x is proportional to root y where y is greater than 0 y is increased by 45 percentage work out the percentage increase in x so you can say y is increased by 45 percentage and you need you know y is proportion x is proportional to root y so increase by 44 means you can say y increased by 1.44 so x is increased by root of 1.44 which is 1.2 so you can say x is increased by 20 percentage that is 20 percentage now next problem f and g are functions such that f of x 
is 12 over root x and g of x is 3 times 2x plus 1. You have to find g of 5. So you just put value 5. So g of 5 will be 3 times 2 times 5 plus 1, which is 3 times 11, which is 33. Similarly, g of f of 9. So what you first do is f of 9. So f of 9 is 12 over root 9 or 12 over 3. Now you do is g of 12 over 3, which is g of 4. So you just put the values here now. 3 times 8 plus 1, which is 3 times 9, which is 27. Now g inverse 6. So you have g of x. You have g of x as 3, 2x plus 1. From here, you have to find inverse, right? So you do, you can write gx minus 3 equals 6x. Or you say x is equal to gx minus 3 over 6. So you can say g inverse x will be equal to x minus 3 over 6. Or g inverse 6 is 6 minus 3 over 6 which is 1 over 2. Now uh, we have few more questions left. So let's do the next one. Just show that root 180 minus root 5 to root 5 over 5 root 5 minus 5 can be written in the formula form of a plus root 5 over b where a and b are integers. So what you can do is root 180 minus 2 root 5 over 5 root 5 minus 5. You can re rewrite this as root 36 times 5 minus 2 root 5 over 5 root 5 minus 5. So you can take root 36 outside which is 6. So you can say 6 root 5 minus 2 root 5 over 5 root 5 minus 5. So 6 root 5 minus 2 root 5 will be 4 root 5. Similarly, 5 root 5 minus 5 you can you can cancel one root 5 from numerator and denominator. So you have 4 root 5 over 5 root 5 minus 5. So you canceling root 5 from denominator and numerator you get 4 over 5 minus root 5. Now you're multiplying numerator and denominator using 5 plus root 5. So you get 4 5 root 5 over 5 minus root 5 times 5 plus root 5. So you will get 20 plus 4 root 5 over 20. Which can be written as 1 plus root 5 over 5. Okay. So this is a relatively uh, challenging problem. You might get like confused a little bit. But yeah, you can also solve this. Now, <clears throat> next part of the problem is DEF is a triangle. P is a midpoint of FD and Q is a midpoint of DE. FD is A and FE is B. Use a vector method to prove that PQ is parallel to P. You have to say that pq is parallel to fe so what you can do is you can say de is equals b minus a so you can say pd will be equal to 1 over 2a so when you use that assumption you can say pq is equal to 1 over 2a plus half b minus a where b minus a is dq dq is half b minus a so you can say pq from there as half b so you say fe will be equals to 2pq so they are parallel now let's move on to the next problem 
So the diagram shows two shaded shapes A and B. Shape A is formed by removing a sector of a circle with radius 3x minus 1 from a sector of the circle with radius 5x minus 1. Shape B is a circle of diameter 2 minus 2x. The area of shape A is equal to the area of shape B. Find the value of x. So it's a lengthy problem. So we can do is sector is one eighth. You can see the sector is one eighth of a circle, right? Which is because it is 45 degree because of the angle. So the radius is 3x minus 1 plus 2x. So that is 5x minus 1. So you can say area of the sector. You can say area of the sector equals area of sector will be 1 over 8 pi times 5x minus 1 whole square. So the non-shaded area of non-shaded region will be which is this until this point area of non-shaded shaded will be 1 over 8 pi times 3x minus 1 whole square. So you can say the remaining area A will be this minus this. So 1 over 8 pi times 5x minus 1 whole square minus 3x minus 1 whole square. Similarly, you can say B, area of B will be pi r square. So your r will be 2 minus 2x over 2 which is pi times 1 minus x whole square. Now you are saying area of A and B are equal. So from there you can solve for A. So we equate those. So pi times 1 minus x whole square equals 1 over 8 pi times 5x minus 1 whole square minus 3x minus 1 whole square. When you do the rearrangement and cancellations, you get x as either 1 over 2 or x as minus 2. So x minus 2 is a negative value. So we don't accept that value. So you use x as 1 over 2. Let's move on to the next problem. These There are four types of cards in a game. Each card has a black circle or a white circle or a black triangle or a white triangle. So number of cards with black shape, number of cards with white shape is 3 is to 5. Number of cards with white circle and number of cards with the triangle is 2 is to 7. Express the total number of cards with a black shape as a function of the total number of cards with the triangle. You can say 3 over 8 of total cards have black shape. Right. So you say from this you can say 3 over 8 of total shapes. Sorry, total cards have black shape. Similarly, you can say from this ratio, 7 over 9 of total cards have triangle. Now you have to express the total number of cards with black shape as a function of total number of triangles. So you just divide 3 over 8. 3 over 8 divided by 7 over 9. So 3 over 8 times 9 over 7, which will be 27 over 56. So that should be your answer. I hope this session was helpful for you. So if you have any doubts and you need materials for your study, uh, please visit feynmaneducation.com. Um, see you in the next video. Thank you.